as uh, Zoe uh, said, I am indeed a scientist. And uh, this is somewhat important because many of the people uh, that you will speak to on this subject are not people who have direct experience of, ex uh, of experiments in the lab or scientific studies on this subject. Uh, most people have read some literature and they are more or less repeating or synthesizing what they were told. This is not my case because I do have uh, direct experience. Originally, I worked for a power utility and in the utility, it was widely uh, stated that electromagnetic fields had no uh, biological effects uh, beyond heating or something like that. But actually, this is something that is uh, unfortunately not true because uh, although radiation is non-ionizing, it doesn't mean that it has no health effects. So beyond the fact that I am a person who has worked for power utilities, I have been contracted by telecommunications companies in the past to help them on this subject. And I am now a university professor I am also a, uh, I am also a, uh, a commissioner of the International Commission on the Biological Effects of Electromagnetic Fields, which is a group of scientists, uh, many of them from the United States, who have been mostly studying this subject uh, lifelong. And so I believe they have a lot of knowledge on this subject. Now, to prove to you that I am not lying when I say that I have direct experience, we will go through uh, very rapidly through two slides from my laboratory, which I am still currently running. This one shows that electromagnetic radiation is, as you see here, a cancer promoter. If you look at this data without understanding the, the details, you'll see at the bottom here that you have the range of exposures in the home, the range of exposures that are commercial, and the range of exposures that are industrial. Now, the biological results in this image are that if electromagnetic fields had no effect, all of this data should stick to the baseline, which is in red in each of these four diagrams. The first one is in relation to leukemia, the second one to breast cancer, the third one to lung cancer, and the fourth one to colon cancer. So according to these lab experiments on human cells, electromagnetic fields would have effects unexpectedly for utilities or telecoms, you know, on all human cancers. Essentially, it would increase, the exposure would increase the diversity of cells in a tumor, essentially making them more malignant. Now, another uh, of my results is that magnetic fields are comparable to oxygen or in, even stronger than oxygen, which as you know, is not only a food for our bodies, but also generates free radicals. So completely ind independently of oxygen, magnetic fields can increase the amount of free radicals and tissues, which makes this agent, electromagnetic radiation, as indicated here, a cancer initiator. Now, what I want to draw your attention to uh, tonight, on the other hand, is not my work. It is the work of, of some colleagues uh, uh, throughout the world. And the first article I want to show you is an article that also supports the idea that electromagnetic fields from cellular phones, and in this case, base stations, are a cancer promotion. This is a very interesting study that we call uh, ecological epidemiology. How is this done? You take a large rich city in South America, specifically in Brazil. It is the city of Belo Horizonte. And to avoid all bias in the selection of uh, the subjects, you simply repertory from health officials 
everyone in a given region who already has cancer. And then in cooperation with the telecommunications companies, you ask them to, to inform on where they are going to install new cell towers in the next little while. And what you then assess is the effect of installing these cell towers on the residents who already have cancer. Now, what are the results that were obtained? And essentially what you're doing is that you're installing a new cell tower somewhere, and you do expect that as a function of distance, as illustrated here, the exposure to the radiation will vary according to the distance from the cell tower. Here we have one kilometer, 500 meters, 100 meters, and so on. So what do the uh, health, the cancer outcomes for these patients who already had cancer, what happens to them? Well, what happens to them is this. So what you see here is that the rate of mort mortality per 10,000, if the cell tower had no effect at all, should be at the blue line. But somewhat surprisingly for some, if you, were, uh, you live within 100 meters of the cell phone tower, your chance of dying from your cancer, if you already have cancer, obviously, will be increased by about 43% here. And it's rising as you go to under the, uh, the cell tower. So as you live more and more distant from the cell tower until about 500 meters, you have a substantial increase in your probability not of having a headache, not of feeling uh, annoyed by the visual presence of the, the tower, you have an increased probability of dying. Furthermore, it was documented how, when this happens, you install the cell tower, most of these supplementary deaths will happen in the first year, mainly in the second year. Probably by the second year, the residents have gotten used to the site of the cell tower, and after that, it seems to decrease slowly. And all, eventually, as these uh, people who have cancer all eventually die, the effect uh, wears off. So I think that this is a very uh, telling impact. And although it is uh, in relation to people who already have cancer, it has a broad significance. Now, this is... A study from the Ukraine, long-term exposure to microwave radiation provokes cancer growth. Again, this is an article from a totally different part of the world that also demonstrates that you have electromagnetic radiation, microwave radiation from radars and mobile communication systems acting as a cancer promoter. But this is not the only mechanism by which microwave radiation from telecommunications uh, is deleterious. Uh, my colleague, uh, Igor Yakimenko, and another of the uh, uh, commissioners on the ICBE-EMF uh, committee, uh, studies oxidative mechanisms. Any of you who have a little bit of biological background will know that uh, Oxidative mechanisms are the mechanisms that generate reactive oxygen species. Reactive oxygen species can uh, uh, impair the structure of DNA. They can be very active in a number of chronic diseases as well. So this is very, very significant, not only for cancer, but for, for a number of chronic diseases. Which ones? Diabetes. Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's, and so on. So what this means is that the present exposures that we have to this radiation already, in all probability, are increasing the rate of these diseases in the population. 
So if you increase the radiation, you are going to further deepen the problem we have with these chronic diseases. Uh, I was also uh, a uh, participant in this, the, the, the state of New, New Hampshire uh, study on 5G technology. If you know, uh, some years ago, you see the date here, uh, 2020, this is the, the report from this, uh, this committee. The state of New Hampshire studied not only 5G, but electromagnetic radiation, wireless electromagnetic radiation, generally for a couple of years to come to a conclusion about its biological activity. One of the things that was noticed in this study was that there are firefighters in California who have obtained protection, legal protection, meaning that no cell towers should be installed on their uh, installations. So I'm going to read through this. Due to the lack of evaluation for long-term safety and research that link neurological impacts in firefighters to cell antenna exposure, the International Association of Firefighters has long opposed cell antennas on fire stations, stating that fire department facilities where firefighters and emergency response personnel live and work are not the proper place for technology which could endanger their health and safety. So the International Association of Firefighters passed a resolution that they oppose cell towers on fire station in 2004, and it remains in effect today. And the cause of this is very simple. Six California firemen received brain and neurological injury resulting in permanent excitement of brain neurons from macro cell base stations on the roofs of their fire station radiating between 10,000 and 20,000 microwatts per square meter. This is 1,000 of the FCC limit. So we would be unwise not to take this seriously. Now, the state of New Hampshire had 17 recommendations in their report. One of these recommendations related to a setback requirement for all new towers of 500 meters. Did I hear earlier that you had 500 feet? There's a big difference between 500 feet and 500 meters. 500 meters is 1,640 feet. So the logic is, as stated here, that as vulnerable individuals are exposed involuntarily every day in society to RF radiation, caution should be universally used and set according to the largest observed effect distance using the experience from past and current 2G, 3G, and 4G networks. A conservative distance should include all observed health effects. So in 17 documents, you know, that detailed the health impacts of radiation within 500 meters, it was decided that 500 meters was an appropriate setback for all new installations. All of these studies have been given support by a recent animal study from the Ramazzini Institute. Ramazzini Institute is one of the jewels of this planet in terms of assessing toxicity of environmental agents. They have great expertise on this subject. They are highly respected. And they were studying specifically intensities relevant to the intensities produced by cell phone towers. And they found evidence of carcinogenicity in a very, very well, very well performed study. As well, this study was uh, supported by the, the US National Toxicology Program on cell phones, which was perform performed in North Carolina. So the science is not ambiguous. And Elaine earlier talked about two opposing views. There are not two opposing view. There is one scientific view, which tells you that electromagnetic radiation has to be carefully controlled, just like you would control a chemical. The opposing view, view is a commercial view 
of an industry that has had remarkable success and simply wants to expand its systems as far as it can. So we have to take this consideration seriously. Probably like most communities in the world, you will be told by industry that if you didn't, don't install the, these systems, you will be reputed to live in the dark ages and that you will lose economically uh, very, very substantially. Nobody will want to come to your place. Well, I think this is really misleading. In terms of economic opportunity, there's a big difference between telecommunications, which means having some means of communication, and wireless. They're entirely different. In other words, it's clear that being able to communicate effectively is essential to your economy, even to your comfort at home. But it is much less obvious that wireless has any economic impact that is positive. This is uh, data from the US government analyzed by the Economic Policy Institute. So it is the American government saying this. Look here at the evolution over since about 1950 to uh, the year around 2015, the evolution of the productivity of the US economy, which is this blue curve here. And this is when wireless was introduced. Now, you'll know that when you introduced wireless and so put cell phones in the hands of many, many people, the impact that was notable was not a huge rise in productivity. It was a reduction in productivity. And if many of you are familiar with industry or with, with commerce, you will know that the uh, cell phone, the individual use of cell phone has given individuals a lot of convenience, but also a lot of freedom. And one of these freedoms is the freedom to get away from work. So I am not entire, I'm not at all surprised that the US government is telling us that in the years where we introduced wireless, productivity fell. And it took about 20 years for managers to learn to compensate for this. So there are severe and serious health imp impacts of electromagnetic radiation on many aspects of health. Most of these diseases you're already familiar with. If you don't want them to rise, we call them the diseases of civilization. If you don't want more diabetes, more cancer, more Alzheimer's and more Parkinson's, reduce your exposure to electromagnetic radiation. 